everybody. Welcome to HackerCast. I think this is HackerCast uh, 19. 19. My name is Jeremiah Grossman, founder and CEO of White Hat Security. And with uh, Matt Johansson here, uh, manager, TRC Houston. And as always, Robert Arsnake Hansen. Hello. <laughs> from uh, Austin, Texas. Now, Robert is uh, in Austin, but Matt and I right now are not in our usual offices. Uh, we are at AppSec USA in Santa Monica. Uh, I'm sorry, not AppSec Cali, sorry, AppSec Cali. And uh, we're with a whole bunch of uh, application security geeks talking about software security stuff. It's uh, kind of a nice place to do an application security conference at the beach. Uh, you know, I'm feel so Jerry, I'm feeling like you. You know, I feel like I should kick my <laughs> shoes off. I, you know, you're usually the one with the palm trees in the back uh, during HackerCast. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm usually looking a lot like Robert with a uh, home office in the back. But uh, <laughs> this will do. It will. <laughs> so, so let's get to uh, HackerCast. Let's, uh, let's try to keep up to speed on all the stuff that goes on application security all the time. So uh, uh, first up was uh, something near and dear to Robert's uh, heart, Slow Loris. Apparently Slow Loris lives and has been still using to knock web servers offline. So Robert, what's going on there? Yeah, apparently there's a company called Pressable, which is a big WordPress, WordPress provider. Um, and you know they got a lot of customers, and they got hit by it uh, by Slow Loris, which is an HTTP DOS tool that I wrote uh, quite a few years ago. And apparently, people are still vulnerable to it. And um, it, it, which is it's pretty sad because I mean, honestly, it's actually pretty easy to defend against. But unfortunately, even to this day, um, Apache doesn't ship with uh, a configuration out of the box that makes it easy to do that. So uh, they went down, and apparently they lost a bunch of customers in the process. They were down for like four or five days. Oof. That's, that's what, how did, what was like the technique behind Slow Loris? How was that working? Uh, basically, it makes uh, 256 connections to your server, or, or that's configurable, whatever the number is, and it slowly sends partial HTTP uh, headers, just parts of it, over time. And it's just so slow that it consumes all your resources, and eventually Apache just has no, no more left to give. Uh, and ironically, your web server actually gets better performance when you're under attack because no one's on the site. I remember way back when this was used like in, uh, in Iran during like some of their uprisings there. So people are still getting use out of the, out of the tool. It's a, it was a modified version uh, according to the news reports, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Pylorus because it was over HTTPS, and uh, Perl isn't thread safe over HTTPS. So... Uh, Pyloris is written in Python, it is. Uh, and I asked him if uh, he had a PCAP, and he did. And, and just total an aside, there's a new tool called Cap Tipper, um, which we'll link to, which might give uh, somebody doing that type of investigation a little bit more uh, visibility into what happened. So, so what's, what's the solution to this? Like, what, what's the general recommendation to defend against the lower style of DDoS, or DOS attacks? Uh, throwing up a proxy in the middle uh, is probably the best way that I've heard, uh, like an F5 load balancer or Cisco load balancer or whatever. Uh, basically anything that isn't another Apache load balancer. And uh, you can do stuff like request timeouts as help. Uh, Mod security apparently has made some changes. There's also something called anti-Loris and no-Loris uh, modules, which should help as well. For those of you in the Node community, there's actually a NPM module called Bouncer. Uh, Friend of friend of ours, Ryan Huber, wrote it, and that's, it's exactly made to defend against this type of attack. So, so as everybody knows, DOS is still alive and well out there in the world. So uh, let's move on to the next story. This one is pretty interesting. Actually, it could be quite devastating. Uh, GoDaddy had a, a CSRF vulnerability that I guess was published and they fixed, but it, it's actually quite interesting. Yeah. So uh, this is bad, right? Because GoDaddy, you know, it hosts. Uh, do we even know what percentage of websites GoDaddy? I mean. It's such a, <laughs> gigantic, popular hosting company, right? Mostly due to Danica Patrick and her, uh, you know, street cred is when it comes to... to uh... Danica affects the security of the web. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. But anyway, yeah, so CSRF bug. So uh, basically, if you're authenticated to your uh, domain admin account for GoDaddy, uh, uh, an attacker can force your browser to uh, change DNS zones... Um, uh, let me let me actually pull up the list so I don't forget any, anything real quick. Um, I have it right over here. Uh, there was a, a few different things. Uh, you could change name servers, the post request to Ouch. edit name servers. Uh, you could change your auto renew to off. So if someone's <laughs> trying to sc snipe a domain, wow. you can t you can force that person who owns that domain to turn auto renew off so that when it expires, you can grab it. Uh, and then you can edit the DNS zone file, the actual 
you can change where your website points. Period. Uh, that's that's game over right there. Um, if you guys remember, this is uh, this is what happened to unfortunately the Syrian electronic army is is huge in this, and the, this is what they're using. Uh, they're not targeting websites; they're targeting uh, DNS providers and hosting providers, and then uh, changing where the website points to to redirect to something that the Syrian electronic army uses. This is their hack of choice, and uh, and now GoDaddy was was vulnerable to it. So uh, so did GoDaddy. I, I guess there's nothing really for the user to do except log out from GoDaddy, which. GoDaddy system is actually pretty good about that, but uh, did GoDaddy fix this one? Yeah, so they were actually uh, really, really, really good about this. So disclosure timeline, uh, January 17th, just 10 days ago from when we're filming this, oh, not bad. Uh, was when it was discovered. Uh, 18th, uh, further attempt to kind of help uh, identify and, and, and talk to GoDaddy from the researcher, and by the 19th, it was fixed. Wow. One day. Good That's unheard them. of. Good for them. Um if we look at White Hat stats, the time to fix is in the is in triple digit days almost always. So good good for GoDaddy. Cool. By so the way, Go, GoDaddy also had a massive denial of service attack this morning. Um, didn't get a whole lot of reports on it, except for a whole bunch of people noticed their sites were down. It apparently had something to do with some puppy video. It's not just it's not just Danica Patrick. It's also puppies. <laughs> so, so we got uh, we got DOS attacks with Solaris. We got. Uh, uh, GoDaddy CSRF, the disclosure. So, but we also had another uh, interesting happen earlier this week. There was the the Lizard Squad, which for those that don't remember the Lizard Squad, they actually were the ones that dosed out of existence the PlayStation Network and the Xbox Network during the holidays when we all wanted to play video games. I was playing. <laughs> anyway, so the Lizard Squad uh, j just hacked the uh, Malaysian Airlines website, and so it, it was kind of inter squad. What do you want? It was the, the website was all in black, and it said four four and play not found. So it's play kinda, not found. So it's kind of an uncool you know joke in that sort of a way. <laughs> but it looked like you know according to Lizard Squad, he followed their Twitter account that uh, you know customer data was actually being released. So not a good not a good side all around. Still unknown exactly how the hack occurred. Uh, it might be you know direct hack. It, some reports of DNS redirect attack, and they did it that way. Well, I'm sure we'll know later. But you know we're it just shows that you know web hacking is alive and well. What I want to know is, is it, is it Lizard Squad? Is it Lizard Mafia? Is it Lizard <laughs> Crew? Lizard Squad Mafia. Lizard Squad Mafia. <laughs> <laughs> Their logo is actually kind of cool. Right? It's reminiscent of uh, Lulzac, you know, but this time they have Blizzard. All right, so what's what's the next story on deck? Yeah, SSH to identify oh, Tor yeah. hidden services. Yeah, Robert is our resident Tor expert, so uh, what's going on with uh, identifying Tor, Tor hidden services? Yeah, this is actually pretty super simple and neat. Um, but basically, there's a bunch of machines that are dual homed on the internet that respond both over Tor and over the internet. And uh, what they've done is they some people go across the internet scanning, looking for uh, open SSH servers, pull the fingerprint down, and then compare. They do the exact same thing on Tor network, compare the two, and if they match, they know that that's the Tor hidden service on this real IP address over here, which is Pretty gnarly, actually. That's a great way to de-anonymize people. You know, it's, it's really clever. The thing that struck me is like it's yet another, you know, just yet another way to identify Tor hidden services. I mean, apparently the FBI has their ways until they found uh, what was it, Silk Road, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I, you know, I guess it's going to be really tough to have a hidden service with all these techniques going out there. And how do you really know if it's truly hidden? Uh, it's actually even worse than that. I mean, now, now that they've exposed that that's possible, there's so many other things. Like people use a lot of things, like uh, you know, Akamai or whatever, to obfuscate what their real IP addresses or DOS arrest or Cloudflare or whatever. And very similar issues could be used if you have a wide, you know, wide scale scan of the internet kind of thing going on. So, is there an issue where you're hitting, you're hitting today, and maybe you take the hidden service offline, but they have enough records and in, in history to find out who you were at the time? Like I think it's. The, I think it's the more, trick, you know. I think it's more likely the other way around. As you're building the site, uh, it's live. They scan you, and then you put it on Tor Hidden Service, and then they figure out that you were the same guy. Interesting, huh? So the uh, the last story we should cover, where you know we're at AppSec, we're all about software security bugs, and uh, there's a new report today, a new vulnerability that has a name. It has a name and a logo. It's, it's a called headline. Ghost. So you know right away. It's <laughs> Ghost is a pretty cool name. It's a cool name. I can't joke about it, but apparently it's a, uh, a Linux-based vulnerability that affects, according to the reports, nearly all Linux. It just broke this morning. We don't have a lot of technical details. We haven't had a time to study it. But apparently it's locally exploitable, remote exploitable, and affecting nearly all Linux environments. So 
patch, mm -hmm. if there's a patch. We're not sure. <laughs> We're not sure if the patch works. <laughs> so, but it's something that we'll probably have to cover in a, in a follow-up. Maybe we have to scan our customers if it's a web-based phone, if it could be exploited via a web-based phone. But it's brand new, like three hours old, so we got to get all over this one. Yeah, and uh, maybe we'll cover the technical nitty-gritty of uh, post-mortem of uh, first week with this vuln identified next week on HackerCast, or maybe it's even worth its own blog post. So for those of you interested, stay, uh, stay alert for ghost right on. coverage. <laughs> so uh, just a quick shout-out to the AppSec Cali guys. You guys rock. You know, always do, always do a great job. You can't beat the venue. This is yeah. great. <laughs> <laughs> and the content, the, oh, man, the content lineup oh, this yeah, year is like stellar. Alex Stamos, CISO of Yahoo, did the keynote this yeah. morning. Um, there's track one today. I think I'm just staying in there from like two o'clock on. It's just great. I think all of them are recorded, so they're gonna go online. Yep. So if you missed it, it's gonna be pretty awesome. Jaren and I spoke here last year, and yeah. it's still one of our highest hit YouTube counts. People really like this conference. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Should we show everyone the beach before we sign off? Sure. <laughs> for for our non iTunes listeners, so, so for they, anyone who's uh, watching us on YouTube, there's uh, there's our current view, so you can feel really right. bad for us. <laughs> um,